What are the options of buying an infill? And if you wanted to build an infill yourself, what are the characteristics of a lot that you should be looking for? In this video, we're gonna answer all those questions. And we're also gonna drop some tips along the way in this video, like how do you even choose a builder? Now, I'm gonna be doing this video with Jazz. Uh, he's my camera guy right there. And we're just gonna be taking turns. So in case you missed our first video about what infills are and what are the different types, check out episode one at the top here or down in the description below. Now, infills are new homes on existing lots in established communities. Welcome to the infill series episode two, where we tell you the ins and outs of buying an infill so you can know whether it's the right fit for you and your family. Today I'm going to tell you the options to buy an infill and things you must consider before you purchase an infill. We noticed that more than 85% of our viewers are actually not subscribers. So if you don't want to miss any of our real estate videos packed with valuable information, be sure to subscribe. Let's get started. So there are three options of how to buy infills. So option one is you can build your own infill. So that means that you're going to be the general contractor and you're going to subcontract all the trades people to build it. Now, this is not really recommended if this is your first time building. Now, some of the things that you need to know, as an example, is you have to be proficient with knowing the zoning and understanding different types of zoning so that you know what types of home that you can build, the application process, the bylaws, and a few other things. So the first thing you need to consider is how you're gonna be able to finance this project. Now, if you're building your own infill, you can utilize what's called a draw mortgage, which is financing obtained at different phases of the build. Now, charter banks will be the cheapest option. There are alternative lenders. They do have fees and higher rates, but you can get your money quicker for the draws so you can pay your trades and move the build along quicker. Option two is hiring a builder. Whether you own the land or not, you can engage with a builder right from the beginning from design, breaking ground, and in completing your new home. This option allows the most customization of your home. The builder will finance the project and you will buy the completed home from them. This is a finished product, so it's move-in ready and also comes with new home warranty. And just to give you a, a breakdown of what that is, it's one year for labor and materials, that's called the builder warranty, two years for delivery and distribution system, things like electrical, plumbing, heating, ventilation, AC delivery systems, five years for building envelope, includes roofs and walls, and 10 years for structural, frame, roof structural integrity, and the foundation. Here's a tip. Do your home inspection slightly before the one year builder warranty ends because then any deficiencies that you find, you can have the builder come and fix them all at the same time. So option three is you can buy something that's already built and it can be a new build by a builder or a resale home where a family has recently uh, was living in there. Now, uh, this option um, does give you the most flexibility in terms of uh, possession because you can take possession the quickest since there is no time uh, to build. If you're buying new, you wanna dig a little bit into who the builder is and their past builds. Now, you can do the same thing with resale homes as well too. Now, the first things that I usually look into is for the builder, do they have a company name or is it a numbered company? Meaning, are they trying to leave a legacy and build a brand versus do they have a number company because maybe they're just doing this one project or they're just doing like a quick flip? The difference is, are they trying to leave a legacy or do a quick flip? That's not always a fair representation of builders, but it's something that uh, you can look into. Now, you always want to meet the builder as well too. Uh, we've developed developed a questionnaire uh, that you can ask the builders specific questions. And here are some tips for you guys. Ask them for the addresses that they've built in the past and ask them for references. If their clients were happy, their clients will be fans of the builder and they'll be happy to talk about, you know, the build. And this gives you an opportunity to ask, you know, have there been any issues with the build? How did the builder respond to your concerns, your problems? Were they really helpful in moving everything forward during the process and post sale? We get calls from investors that want to buy property to develop an infill later. And this is a viable longer term strategy since you may not have the funds or credit to build right away or you may want to first rent out the older home on it to get some mortgage pay down first. So the average price for inner city lots is about 
500,000 to 650,000, depending on location and community, and of course, lot size. And one of the things you might want to look for is corner lots, which have a premium of about $30,000 to $40,000. Given the higher price of acquisition for these homes, you actually might not be cash flow positive because of the condition of these homes. What you might want to consider is legalizing your basement suite so that you have two streams of income. And if you want to know more about that, you can check out our video here or I'll leave a link in the description below. If you're going to be buying a lot, these are the things you need to look out for. The first thing is zoning we need to figure out what your intention of the property is going to be to make sure that it is properly zoned for it. Now, if it's not, you will have to rezone the property and it takes about three months right now at the time of this recording and it costs about $5,000 uh, starting. So you have to think about, you know, what is your cash investment into the build? Are there other properties or lots um, that offer the zoning that you're looking for to avoid the time, money, and effort into rezoning it? Now, the second thing you have to think about is the community. Now, every community in the inner city is going through different gentrification cycles. So you have to think, where is the community at? Is it at speculation stage? Is it at maturity stage? What are some of the anchors for that community? Uh, are there big retail shops, commercial developments? Is the LRT or public transportation uh, going into that community? Um, and what is the walkability? Because being in the inner city, a lot of people love to walk a close distance to their amenities. Third thing, corner lots. Now, it is more desirable if you build on a corner lot. Now, if you don't build on a corner lot, you have to be careful how far away you are from the corner lot because a lot of the corner lots allow uh, zoning RCG of up to four townhomes. And because the townhomes, they only require one parking spot per townhome. And the price of these townhomes are a little bit more expensive, which needs dual income. You're probably gonna have two cars per townhome. So it's gonna be a little bit more congested there for our parking. The fourth is the location. If it's backing onto a green space or a park, obviously this is gonna be more desirable with no neighbors back and you'll have a little bit more privacy. And for marketability wise, it's always gonna hold its value better than if it were to be, for example, on a main street. The fifth is home exposure. And we're really talking about sunlight here. Now, if you have a south west or southwest facing backyard that's always going to be more desirable because a lot of people like spending their time out in the sun in the summertime if your front faces south then um, you know that's great if you have big south facing windows i don't recommend buying on a main road unless you really want to be in a community and your budget only allows you to have properties or to buy properties that are on the main road. Now, you want to make sure that there's no city signs in front of there, like a stop sign or a yield or a bus stop, um, because that takes away your parking. You don't want uh, what we call street furniture, so electrical boxes on the property, and you don't want to be buying on a too small of a lot. Uh, you want to aim for a full size lot, 50 by 120. Um, a slightly bigger one is okay, but that's your typical uh, standard size when building uh, an infill duplex. If you're looking to build one single family home, uh, it doesn't have to be the full 50 by 120. It can be slightly smaller than that. The city of Calgary wants densification and each community has an area redevelopment plan. So if you wanna understand what the city has planned or their vision for a specific community, email us with the community that you're interested in and we'll be happy to share that with you. We hope this video helped you level up on your knowledge for infills. If you found it helpful, like and share it for us. Leave us with any questions that you have or topics you want us to cover because we engage with each and every one of you. Stay tuned for our next three episodes of the infill series as we take you on a tour of a townhome, duplex, and a single family infill. Also, we're gonna share with you the price ranges for each. We love sharing our expertise with you, so subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our weekly videos. We really appreciate everyone's support. We're Felix and Jasmine, and we are the Live Energy Real Estate Team. Take care, and we'll see you next time.